Hi everyone and welcome to the What to Expect When You're Transferring workshop presented by the Los Angeles Harbor College Transfer Center. Thank you so much to our wonderful students for joining us, whether you're doing so live right now or um, later on through our Instagram TV or YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us. And this workshop again is presented by the Los Angeles Harbor College Transfer Center um, for transfer season 2020, which is this fall. So to get started, we're gonna be looking at transfer in a year. This includes application or transfer season, uh, registration and graduation petition, the January update, transcripts, submitting intent to enroll, the transfer recognition ceremony, GE certification, as well as transferring at the very end. So getting started is number one, the application for transfer season. So it's application season, transfer season right now. And what happens is students apply to, during fall, they apply to start next fall at the university. So if you want to be at a university campus um, for fall 2021, you do need to apply now one year in advance. So in terms of the Cal States, the Cal States are open for applications October 1st through December 4th, 2020 for fall 2021 admission. The University of California system, also known as the UCs, such as UCLA, UC Irvine, UC Berkeley, to name a few, those applications are open from November 1st through, thir through 30th, 2020 for fall 2021 admission. Now, students ask me all the time, do I have to write an essay? Is that required? I'm nervous about the essays. So these are also known as personal insight questions and personal statements. For the UC campuses specifically, you're required to answer four essay questions minimum. The essay questions, they all have equal weight. There's one mandatory question and then three additional ones that you get to choose from seven other options. Um, and those are required. They're also required for private schools like USC and LMU. They're not required for CSU applicants um, who are trying to get into various majors. They will not ask you to turn in an essay. The only part that you will need to write something for is the EOP application. So if you're, especially if you're already an EOPS student at Harbor College and you wanna get EOP at a Cal State, then you definitely wanna consider um, applying for EOP at a Cal State. And in your CSU application, you will indicate so, and they will ask you some questions about your development as a student, as a person, and you will answer those accordingly. And when it comes to these essays, please don't feel like you have to do them all by yourself and just turn them in. You are so welcome to get feedback from us at the Transfer Center. We're glad to review that with you. Um, you are also welcome to do so during an appointment with our counselors um, if you want to do so in a private matter because I know a lot of the times very sensitive, you know, topics do come up and we want you to feel supported and that it's a confidential space to get your true feedback for the questions. We also have great workshops planned for the month of November to help students with their UC application, um, personal insight question and answers. Next is registration and graduation. So that's another very important part of transfer and what to expect. So when it comes to registration and graduation, you definitely want to register early for your classes. You will need to know when is your registration appointment for winter and spring 2021, which is accessible in your LAHC portal, mycollege.laccd.edu. When you log in, you are able to access your registration appointment or the first day and time that you can register for winter and spring 2021 classes. Um, the reason why it's so important is because you do have to finish all of your classes for admission by the end of spring 2021 to be eligible to start in fall 2021. So it's very time sensitive and that's why we wanna make sure that you pick your classes as early as possible. And you may need to take winter classes to finish in time. So expect that you, you, know, you may have to take a number of classes in winter and spring if you are um, a little bit behind. And do not wait to add classes on the first day of the semester. Please don't wait to do that. If you have to, because you have no other choice, I understand, but try to get it done early, adding your classes to avoid the stress of coming on the first, well, in this case, you know, emailing the teacher, 
the first week of school and asking for a permission number. That's just a lot of stress for a student and something that I would rather my students avoid and just sign up early. And be sure to make a counseling appointment so that way we can update your ed plan and make sure that you have all the classes that you need and we don't have any surprises later on and you are just ready to go. The next thing, petition to graduate. That's another very important component. So my students who are earning an associate degree for transfer, you will need to submit your graduation very early, your graduation petition, excuse me, very early into the spring semester. So I normally tell my students, you know, come see me um, and try to get the graduation petition and we want it normally like first day of, of um, spring 2021 semester in a perfect world, right? Um, as long as you are enrolled in spring and winter 2021 classes, I'm glad to do your graduation check. So if, let's say your registration date is in November, right, for winter and spring, you're welcome to make a, an appointment with me early so I can check for you. And as long as you're good to go, we'll do the graduation petition paperwork, right? And then you just turn it in on the first day of school in spring 2021. So you meet with the counselor, um, register for your winter and spring classes, and the counselor can petition you during an appointment. Um, do not wait for drop in on the first day of spring 2021. By all means, if you have no other choice, I understand like we want you there. We want to do that graduation petition with you, you know, the first day of school, right? Drop in first day of spring 2021, right? But if you can avoid that and see the counselor during winter, just so we can get that started or even better to see the counselor in fall and we can do your graduation check. And just, as long as you're registered, we can do that paperwork early and you submit it in the first week and not have to stress out about it later. That's honestly the best way to go, um, in my opinion, just to make sure everything is smooth and seamless. Next is the January update. So this is very important. This is where you go back into your application, right? So you applied in fall for admission, and now you have to log back in in January and update the universities. So what you wanna include in that January update after you apply you want to include your fall 2020 grades when you log back in. You want to include the winter and spring 2021 class update. So let's say you were supposed to take, let's say I'm a psychology major and originally I was going to take psych 10 in winter, but now I'm going to take it in spring instead. I also make sure that I input correctly that I'm taking psych 10 in spring now instead of winter. And if I'm going to take history 11 in winter now, then I want to make sure that I change that accordingly. Um, if I were to have repeated any classes, so let's say I got a D in a class over summer and then I repeated it in fall, then I can go ahead and when I log back in, I can indicate that my summer grade of a D, I can put RP for repeat on the CSU application and then put in the new grade from fall. So if I got an A, then it'll rebalance my GPA and I should have a higher transfer GPA. Um, as well as academic renewal, so sometimes students they are eligible for academic renewal once their grades come in for fall 2020 they're now eligible to get forgiveness for some of their old um, substandard grades so you want to make sure that when you log back in in january you also include any classes that were academically renewed for you um so that's just really important the grades that are all updated and current to be a reflection of your transcript the next thing transcripts are mandatory the universities definitely need those transcripts in. Um, just to give you some examples, universities do in fact need all transcripts. So I'll use myself for an example again. If I went to LBCC, Long Beach City College 10 years ago and I got just one W in one class and I never went back again, I need to put those transcripts in. I need to send them, right? Um, along with my Harbor College transcripts. Um, students, if you need any help or have any questions about that, um, please contact us. Um, but the universities that you apply to, when they request the transcripts, you need to provide them for all, from all campuses attended. If you do not provide them, they do consider that lying in a way and they can revoke your admission. And they actually, normally they'll run the student's background. They'll be able to find out if the student did have transcripts or not. And from there, they make their choices. Um, so deadlines vary when transcripts are due. So Cal State Long Beach likes to request transcripts once they, once they send you your acceptance letter, that's when they'll ask you to send in your transcripts by a certain date. Cal State Northridge, going based off of um, their admission practices last year, they wanted the transcript, transcripts by January, February 
of last year. Um, they, what they really wanted was the fall grades posted along with winter and spring classes and progress also appearing on the transcripts as well to verify that you were in the classes that you reported on your application. Dominguez, historically going based off of last year as well, they wanted the transcripts start by July 15th. Cal State LA, during their recent conference that they had for counselors, they shared that they wanted the transcripts in March 2021 for students who applied for fall 2021 admission. And for the UCs, they want them by July 1st, 2021, according to the UC transfer admission website. The next thing, submitting intent to enroll. So that is when you confirm that you are going to that campus and you, that includes an enrollment deposit, right? And this is absolutely required. Um, it is a time sensitive deadline. So if you do not turn it in, or if you do not submit your intent to enroll in time, that can result in the loss of your admission to the university. So you wanna make sure that you secure your spot. Um, so submit your intent to enroll on time, follow that deadline. This normally also in includes a fee. Um, if you were to apply, for example, to Dominguez, if you qualify for the fee waiver, um, you wouldn't be billed the fee at all whatsoever. You would just click a button and be done with it. But for campuses that do charge a fee, they will ask for it at the time that you submit your intent to enroll. Um, normally also when you secure your spot with the SIR, that also includes requesting that you sign up for orientation. And for UC specifically, you can only submit your intent to enroll, enroll to one UC campus. So you can't confirm with Berkeley and confirm with UCLA at the same time. You have to pick one or the other. They only let you do one. For Cal States, I've had students where they'll submit their intent to enroll to more than one campus. Um, but um, normally my students only pick one. Sometimes it happens where students will pick two just because they haven't made up their mind yet, but they don't want to lose their spot at either campus. The only thing is that can be very expensive because it does cost money um, to submit that intent to enroll. Next is our wonderful transfer recognition ceremony. My absolute favorite parts of um, being one of the transfer counselors is being able to celebrate our students and all of their accomplishments at the end of the transfer year. So in May, we had just last year, we had a virtual transfer recognition ceremony. This year it's gonna be virtual again, but um, our students submit their pictures of themselves um, and just a message you can share a quote that really motivated you or a thank you to your family. Um, you include what universities you were accepted to or just which one that you're transferring to, whichever you're more comfortable with. But we turn it into a slideshow. One of our wonderful CGCAs, Vanessa, actually last year, she made a beautiful slideshow with music and our students had watch parties at home with their families. And it was really special and sweet. And it's just, um, our time to celebrate all of your hard work and your moment to know that um, we see everything that you put into your education. And we're so proud of our students at the end of the year. Next is GE certification. So you wanna make sure to request GE certification before sending your transcripts to the university. So what GE certification means is that you finish the lower division general education courses required. Um, GEs are not required, GE certification is not required for admission for students not earning an associate degree for transfer, but it is wonderful to have because it will save you so much money in having to complete extra classes once you transfer. So talk to your counselor. You're welcome to discuss it with me, making sure that you have, you know, if you wanna to transfer to both UCs and Cal States, making sure you have I get C done, or if you only wanna to transfer to Cal States, making sure you have a CSUGE done. Um, but a counselor can help you do that. And then you want to make sure that that actually appears on your transcript before you send out to the university. So that way they will honor your general education certification and you will not be responsible for taking additional classes once you transfer. And then of course, at the very end, once those transcripts are in, you signed up for orientation, you are ready to go, you are transferred and we are so happy to support you on that journey all year long. Um, the Transfer Center is here for you, and we hope that you feel welcome to reach out to us. Um, and we thank you for being present at this workshop now. Um, please, if you don't already, follow us on Instagram at LAHC Transfer Center. And then you can also download the Grad Guru app. 
for every you know update possible that you could think of related to transfer their push notifications on your phone just search la harbor college on the grad guru app and you'll be able to add us and same thing for lahc transfer center on instagram we just keep it very helpful and informative for our students so thank you so much for joining me um, I'm now going to end this recording. Thank you for all of our students on Instagram, IGTV, and YouTube for joining us, and for all of our students who are here in person and took time out of their day. Thank you again.